The Boston Celtics topped the Milwaukee Bucks 116 to 108 here at Milwaukee in game four. Jason Tatum finished with 30 points and it didn't come easy, right? I felt like this was one of those games where Tatum sort of had to read the defense, pick his spots, and man, did he come, or I should say deliver in a big way in that fourth quarter. Seven straight points, really got things going in the fourth, created that or helped create that double digit lead where the Celtics essentially never looked back down the stretch. They won by eight, but almost felt like they won by a lot more because uh, as Marcus Smart said, he just felt like the Milwaukee Bucks were just sort of just little by little just didn't have the energy left to finish this one and of course it showed in that final box score. Yeah big difference there Celtics doing it more across the board Bucks over reliant on Giannis and we saw that moment where Giannis fell in the backcourt Smart was trying to help him up and just gave up because Giannis was laid out so flat at that point. Right. Horford helping out we talked about him in the first video allowed Tatum to have the moment he did there in that fourth quarter finding the mismatch against George Hill scoring eight straight points going underneath we saw that last bucket that made it 10 the little floaters he fell forward and he broke through the wall that the Bucks had put in front of him. He saw that Giannis checked out of the game for a minute for a breather there, and that was an opportunity for him to get inside and score some easy buckets, not hitting those tough leaning jumpers over the wings, not trying to bounce around screens while guys are ducking under them and getting back to him, staying attached to the body and shooting tough threes. Yeah. Everything was coming so difficult for Tatum, especially early in games through the first three contests. And he said after that 4-19, they lost by two, and we talked about it on post game. If he just did a tiny bit more, they would have had a win in that game, and that stuck with him, and he brought that into tonight. Another rough start, but he worked through it, and you look at the double-digit rebounds, you look at the quality assist night that he had, it's another embodiment of Ime Adoka, who you know finished fourth in Coach of the Year today. Another thing that I think he deserves a lot of credit for, when Tatum's not scoring, they're going to get him doing other things to stay involved, and that was the story of Tatum's night tonight. He broke through late, and it saved them. Especially on the defensive end as well. I mean, Tatum continues to show that energy on the other end, but also he's not—he's being much more patient. I know we talked about this uh, briefly during the Celtics post-game show. Whereas three months ago, or maybe even before that, during the beginning, you know, a couple of months of the regular season, it was almost as if he, he was programmed to thinking, "I need to take over. When, when things are down, I need to be the one to take over." And even though he's able to do that in different ways, that doesn't necessarily mean he needs to go off and have a 12, you know, 20 point fourth quarter or that he needs to, you know, continue to, to, to strive for those huge performances. You know, sometimes it's the little things and sometimes those things sort of plant a seed for other guys to, to come up big. You know, in this one, it was Al Horford. You know, in other games, it'll be somebody else. But when it came down to it and that fourth quarter, when the Celtics really needed him, he came through. And I thought that this was a big moment for him because he needed to bounce back from that ice cold performance he had in game three. He needed to show, you know, that in the in the face of adversity during the postseason going up against the defending champions that he was going to rise to the occasion I think he did that in a big way yeah you started with the defense I thought defense is what got them back into the game between the third and the fourth there they ran a small lineup out there and Tatum had to move to the four take on Giannis a few times defensively and they did well they stopped the Bucks on seven out of eight possessions between those two quarters there and then all the other things we've seen him do all playoffs he hasn't had a great scoring postseason but I think he's had a great passing postseason and he's utilized that part of the game to keep the Celtics active involved and in every game I mean he didn't score great against the Nets he killed the Nets with his passing, took advantage of some mismatches late in those games and took over in them. But there were a lot of games against Brooklyn in that first round where he didn't score at all in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. So similar results here, tougher defense in Milwaukee. He's had to go through a lot, but he stayed persistent. You saw him attacking the offensive boards early in the game, especially in that third quarter when things really got desperate. He was like, all right, I might not be scoring here, but I'm going to go get a big putback, stealing the ball away from Giannis there. Yeah. That was big. That was big. And you know what else, too? I felt like he didn't get into the the officiating. The body language was different. Yeah, I feel like his body language was very different compared to what we saw in Game 3. I mean, not to pick on him, he wasn't the only one. I just felt like the officiating, the, the, the way the... The game was going essentially just threw a lot of guys out of their game, you know, whether it was just them barking at the officials, they're, you know, pouting and, and, and not getting back on defense. You didn't see much of that, I felt like, in this game. No, in game three, it, it was an issue, and it, yeah. it was a major issue to start the year with the team. One of the biggest problems on this team is when calls went against them or shots weren't following, two things we've seen a lot of in this series, they would collapse mentally, and they would let it pile up on them. 
they've had a deal nonstop here in Milwaukee with rough calls and a, game, a call that might have cost them a game and physicality and shots not falling, offense going stagnant. For them to persist through all those things, Tatum said it post game. He thought it showed the toughness of this team. And again, I still can't believe this is the most mentally weak team ever to start the year. Now we're looking at them and saying, this is as mentally tough a Celtics team as we've ever seen. The, the persistence, the, right. the, like, the word for just getting through something and you know, getting through those difficult moments. I'm trying to think of the right word, but that's who they are, <laughs> the persistence. Yeah. No, no, I'm glad you said that because that's a good segue into my, my the, the way I want to wrap up this video. But before we get into that, let's uh, shout out, uh, let's pay the bills, so to speak, right? <laughs> to, to our guys over at Calm.com. Right now, if you head over to Calm.com slash garden, you can uh, save 40% on a premium subscription to Calm, uh, the Calm app. We've talked about it a lot on the Celtics post game show. It got you through some hard times for our day one fans, or at least the ones that have been uh, riding with us since the since the very beginning of the uh, regular season. They know exactly what we're talking about. Well, they're back, all right. And again, the offer stands. Uh, head over to calm.com slash guardian. You can save forty percent on a premium subscription when you sign up to Calm or the Calm app, rather. And uh, Bobby, the way I want to wrap up this one is just the way you said it perfectly with the mind games, with the uh, mental toughness, because the Celtics continue to show that. And what I mean by that is I talked about in the Celtics post game show is these constant going down by six seven eight points and coming right back you know doing it in their house doing it in the second half you know even going into that fourth quarter where I'm looked I looked at you and I was like man this team is not even down by 12 right now it felt like they should be or even when they were down at their worst it felt like they should have been down by 24 but they were able to fight back string together these offensive runs that just I feel like it's, it's going to take a toll on the Milwaukee Bucks if this continues into game five at Boston you know at TD Garden whereas you know you you see this other team really get on a big run when they're in front of their home crowd and we could see a potential you know double digit lead by the Celtics which we just haven't been able to see throughout the course of this you know best of seven series up until that fourth quarter and game Game four. Yeah, we've seen one blowout in the series effectively, and it was game two in the Celtics' favor. Tightened up at the end, but they were up 25 at half. Right. So the Celtics are the only two team of these two who have been able to separate from the other in a game. I think the biggest deficit the Bucks put on them in this game was 11, I want to say, in the second half. So right. Celtics have hung around all game, and that was the message going into the fourth, as we talked about. They thought they played so badly, the Celtics, and they were still only down 10 or 11 going into that fourth. They had an opportunity to just play one great quarter and win. feels like that opportunity is going to be there in every single game the rest of the way, but I'm not counting on Milwaukee yet. No, no I said that if they blew that 10-point game in Game 3, they'd be looking shaky the rest of the series, or they blew a double-digit lead late in this one. And I still believe in Giannis. I know he's looking fatigued. I know he didn't have the best game again here, but, man, I just have such a respect for him, his playmaking, and a championship team in the Bucks. I don't think they're dead until the final minutes of a Game 7 here. That's what I'm standing by. I think it's going to take every single game of this series for the Celtics to pull it out. Okay, Bobby, well, give me uh, what's the what's the curveball going to be in this one? Because every game we got a curveball, whether it's no, no Marcus Smart in one game, no Rob in this one for the Celtics, whether it's the big you know lead that the Bucks got out to, really sent the message, set the tone in that game one. You know, it's always been something that was unexpected or something that we didn't quite see. Al Horford, two two 20 plus point performances underneath his belt this one 30 plus you know five three-pointers that kind of performance from Al what can we expect what's the unexpected that we're going to see in game five at TD Garden does Chris Middleton show up I don't know see I feel like if that happens that's more of a game six thing with yeah, the crowd on your saying, side I'm not saying next game Bucks haven't ruled them out yet I don't know a lot about the injury Durant missed a month with it and they effectively said to start this series that he wasn't going to be out there, but they said after game four that it's not, they're probably going to take a game-by-game -game process. And again, I, I think like you said, it'd be more of a game seven thing. They have to pull it out for a two-three deficit okay. or a game seven, but right. it is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, okay, that's your thing. I think mine's going to be the, uh, the the shootout. Remember, heading into the series, like the Bucks are going to have that shootout game, and let's see if the Celtics can survive that. Just because, you know, obviously, not having Chris Middleton out there, also it'll spread the floor for Giannis to go in the paint, dance, and do his thing, get to the free throw line, uh, as my co-host uh, Cedric Maxwell calls it, uh, Giannis Kung Fu, <laughs> his way to the hoop and get to the line over and over again. So I think that's going to help sort of ease that momentum for him, with, which uh, the Bucks really need right now from from Giannis to just have that big 
performance, uh, man, and if the Bucks win that, coming back here to Milwaukee would be huge. So maybe that happens. We'll see if the Celtics will be, will be able to survive that. Yeah, those guys got going late in the game, too. Allen had a few. Connaughton got going late in this game. Still waiting on Portis, who's out here shooting after the game. So the role guys, they've been missing for Milwaukee, I think, through all four games effectively here. So they'll need that. Tougher in Boston. Yeah. It's tougher in Boston, where Grant Williams and Peyton Pritchard played well by comparison. So a lot of pressure on those guys heading into that game for sure. Absolutely. As the Celtics win this one, they have tied up the series after beating the Bucks here at Milwaukee 116-108, to 108, and that's going to do it for us. Of course, you guys already know, follow us for continuous coverage, Celtics playoff coverage on clnsmedia.com and on YouTube at CLNS Media. For Bobby Manning, I am Josue Pavone. We will see you back in Boston for Game 5 at TD Garden.